Prime Minister Justin Trudeau unveiling the Liberal government's plan to solve Canada's housing crisis today. A plan Trudeau says will bring down construction costs, make it easier for cities to build homes at a faster pace, transform how homes are built, and grow the workforce needed to build those homes. It builds on the sizable investments we've made over the years, and it goes a lot further. It's a plan to build housing, including for renters, on a scale not seen in generations. We're talking about almost 3.9 million homes by 2031. And joining me now is Tim Richter, the president and CEO of the Canadian Alliance to End Homelessness. Rick, thank you very much for joining us. You also okay. should mention the co-chair of the National Housing Council. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. You, you, sir, your reaction to uh, the housing announcement? Well, you know, I've got to say that the, the prime minister wasn't exaggerating when he said that this is the most comprehensive and ambitious uh, federal housing plan I think we've seen in about uh, 40 years uh, if not more, it's certainly as ambitious, more ambitious than anything put out by any of the provinces as well. So, I think it's a, I think it's a really, really important document, and and if it's implemented, is going to go a long way to solving the housing crisis. Can it be implemented, though? Do you think uh, it has what it takes to get things done? Well, most of the recommendations in here are uh, certainly are achievable. They're uh, realistic within the confines of what we would expect uh, from from housing policy, and a lot of it is based on recommendations from industry, the nonprofit sector, housing uh, housing uh, experts, and and others. So, uh, I do think that it's uh, certainly uh, certainly doable. What are some of the things that stand out for you that you're the most optimistic about? Well, we've seen a lot of announcements over the last uh, the last several months, and in particular the last few weeks. But there's a couple of things that are new in here that are, uh, I think, are particularly notable. One is uh, accelerated capital cost allowance. That's something that the private sector developers have been really calling for. Uh, from a homelessness perspective, we see more investment in affordable housing. We see a, a, a program to help communities respond to encampments. Uh, and we see a lot of a, a lot of uh, a lot of detail and a number of different items in here that I think are is worth digging into a little bit more. How important is it to have the developers on board for things like this? Well, you know, the housing crisis in Canada is is taking over fifty years to get this bad, and uh, it's going to take trillions of dollars to build that much housing. And there's no possible way for the federal government and the provinces alone to dig their way out of this. So you need to find a way to get private investment building housing and get the investors investing in the builders building, uh, both the private sector and the nonprofit and community housing sector. So uh, that is is really, really essential. And I'm hopeful that the market's going to respond favorably to what they see uh, today. And we have seen those three work together on projects. Have they been successful? Da Downtown Toronto comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we see lots of examples. Like, I think it's important to remember this isn't Canada's first housing crisis, right? It started, we had one following the Second World War, we had another one in the 60s. And we knew in Canada, like right up before 1980, uh, Canada was building tons of rental housing, but it's when the federal government withdrew and stopped doing things like accelerated capital cost allowance that developers stopped building uh, rental housing in Canada. In Canada also used to build 25,000 units of social housing co-ops and, and uh, social housing every year in the 80s. So it's not like we don't know how to do this. Like it's certainly been done before. And a lot of the stuff that you see in today's plan is based on things that have worked in the past. It's, well, there's not a lot of things in here that are brand new. And now this, I mean, this is more probably long-term. Are there short-term things that could be done to help ease the uh, crisis right now? Yeah. Well, that's one of my big concerns with this plan is that it doesn't have anything that's going to solve the housing crisis for people that are worried about their rent today. Uh, we know that in, in homelessness in Canada is exploding. Like it's as big as the largest natural disasters in Canadian history in terms of the loss of housing. And the only way to do that in the short term and the only way to slow that in the short term is to support people's rent. We were hoping for a homelessness prevention uh, and housing benefit. Unfortunately, I don't, I mean, maybe that comes in the budget next week, but that's certainly not in the in the plan today. So there's nothing here 
in the short term, that's going to support uh, Canadians that are struggling with their rent at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but over time, this will go a long way. And how would that plan help those uh, struggling right now? What, what kind of a difference would that make? Well, the, you know, most people that are living in core, well, everybody is living in core housing need are living in housing and they just can't afford the, the housing that they're in. And, and we know from Canadian and international uh, evidence that if you support their rent, help them pay their rent, they're going to be able to stay in their housing. Right. So, you know, people in people, homelessness is exploding today, not because of mental illness or addiction. It's because people can't afford their rent and they're being forced out the bottom of the rental housing market because of demand and uh, growing demand and supply constraints. So uh, to the extent that we'll build more housing, that's that's excellent. That's really, really important, especially deeply affordable. But in the short term, the only way that we're going to keep people from becoming homeless is to reduce the cost of rent or subsidize their rent in some way. Okay, Tim, thank you very much for your time today.